Right, good morning everyone, welcome to another vlog. Um, I've ventured onto Bodmin Moor and I'm at Colliford Lake. Um, hopefully you can see the water behind me. Uh, now the reason I've come here is because one, I'm very silly uh, and I don't mind getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and two, there's these gnarly dead trees. A dead forest pretty much and the water comes up and down depending on how, how much uh, rain we have <clears throat> and uncovers and covers over the trees somewhat there's lots of creepy noises in the bushes behind me <laughs> oh, it's a bit spooky walking around here in the dark on your own anyway I'm a big boy, I can handle myself right, let's get cracking I'm now torn between staying here and trying to take a, a weird sort of deserty shot and hope that sky lights up or go back to where I was and try and isolate and do a real minimal shot. What? Just had a brainwave. I can have both. I can stay here and pray for a good sky, take a shot here and my minimal shot won't matter whether the light is harsh. If anything, if the light's harsh, the shot back there will work better. Yeah. See? Down there for dancing. You've got to get your photography head on and try and plan your shoots. I'm gonna uh, walk around now, these dead trees, try and find a <coughs> composition. I'm gonna be looking for diagonals, or leading lines, or picking out one particular tree, which maybe stands out from the rest, using that as my focal point, um, which will then lead into the rest. Now I'm on the corner at the moment, and it might be quite a good idea to put the, the main tree in my in my immediate foreground and then the trees sort of go off like that on, on left and right diagonals. Um, I'm thinking maybe that might, might work because it is a quite a messy scene and if you shoot more onto it, more at 90 degrees then, you see lines in the trees and but you'll see like lines like this left and right so it would be hard, I think it would be more pleasing to the eye to see a diagonal going off like that with one focal focus in the in the main immediate foreground. See what I mean about the, the lines? You've got straight lines that could lead down into the water now. I don't think that looks particularly... Personally, I don't think it looks particularly um, pleasing to the eye. I don't think your eye gets drawn or led in to a certain way in the image because everything's so symmetrical. I think maybe a diagonal, like I said earlier, better. It's very hard, I've just had a quick walk around, it's very hard to try and simplify the shot. I think I'm going to shoot that way, uh, towards the rising sun. It's very promising. There's lots of cloud, but it's 
there's broken cloud and there's lots of high level wispy cloud up there which might catch the sun I know we always say that every time we go out um, and I'm trying not to go down too close to the trees because I, I really want to get down in there close to the water but I know if I do that and then decide to come back out again I'm then going to have a load of footprints in uh, in my image and I don't want that because there's some lovely leading swirls of the sand which lead up but the water's too low I think maybe I think the image is unbalanced you've got real heavy right hand water and quite bare on the left I don't really like the way the I don't think it will look very good in, in an image I think it would be too unbalanced I think personally that's a shot You've got your main, your main subject, which is this tree, right in front of my lens, and probably two meters, two and a half meters away from it. So I won't have to focus stack it. I'll be around 12, 13 mil, and like I said, I'll have that V of the trees going off in diagonals. Get down low, try and get as much sky in as possible. I don't think it works portrait. I don't like the trees going right out and disappearing into the frame. I think it looks better with a little bit of space either side. So you can see the whole clump of trees. So you know, this is another shot. You can just look. You can see, let me get my bearings. Yeah, you can see a nice leading line which leads up to the trees, but the problem I have with this shot is, like I said earlier, really, it's, it's very heavy on the right, it's very heavy on the left, say, it's very boring on the left. The trees disappear out the left hand side of the frame. And the only sort of real thing you've got is this leading line. But it doesn't really lead to any focal point, it just leads to a clump of trees that are all in line. Because let's be honest, this, is a, this has been planted by man, they're, they're all in line. Say if that led round to a big tree, then you'd think, yeah, that shot would work. But for me, I can't make it work, even in like portrait, emphasising, getting down low. Because there's some lovely textures and shapes in this, leading like in the sand. I still don't think it, uh, it works as a shot. basically try to use this main tree as my focus and even moving like and you're talking half an inch left and right just trying to give that tree a bit of space by putting some blue behind it with the water and the sky so basically I don't want two trees in line with each other I want a little bit of separation and all you've got to do is move nothing it's absolutely nothing but I think that will help the shot um, there's a tree on the right hand side of the frame that I don't like, so I'm eliminating that, but then the tree next to it, one of the branches sticks out of frame, so I might have to do something with that maybe in like in uh, Photoshop, but other than that, the shot just needs a bit of colour. And uh, sunrise has officially happened. Well, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm doing something very radical <laughs> I 
I've got the 10 stop in and I'm going for an extremely long exposure. I'm talking six and a half minutes. Um, just to try and create a bit of drama in that sky. I don't really know what it's going to do, if I'm honest. I don't know if I'm clutching at straws. Uh, I would probably say that might be the case. Uh, anyway, I'm going to give it a go. I was in F9. Um, it was around half a second, just under. So just giving me six, six and a half minutes exposure. I don't want to go any more than that, really. Um, it's very calm and still, but there is some movement up high up in the clouds. They're moving fairly quickly. It's still early, it's still quarter to six, so I'm certainly not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. I'm going to wait it out before heading back to the other shop because the other shop won't work unless I have a bit of a harsh light anyway. It's so peaceful. All you can hear is the birds. Anyway, right, I've got five minutes to go. Uh, I'll see you in five minutes. Well, I'll show you the shot in five minutes. Right after that downpour, <laughs> I have taken some uh, more shorter shutter speed shots around a tenth, still F9, exactly the same composition, um, I think this is the best composition, I don't think I'm even going to attempt walking around again. I uh, just want to utilise these clouds, these clouds are incredible, very stormy, like, like that, that rain shower we just had was that, this big black cloud. It's just very interesting. So I've got a polarizer. I've took the six stop. I took the ten stop off. Uh, let me know what you think of the ten stop down below in the uh, in the comments. It's um, it's an acquired taste, I would say. I quite like a long exposure like that. But now I'm going to take a few shots around one tenth of a second, just trying to freeze these clouds with only just a polarizer, because it's just um, it's very dramatic, very moody. And now, since it's rained, it's sort of dull. It's sort of put like a damp glaze all over the uh, all over the frame. So it's quite nice. It's real dark. It's real grungy, and uh, I think it'd be a shame to have long exposure now. I think it's just best to utilise these big dark clouds. Drama, but that, the scene is very flat. No colour whatsoever. <laughs> um, so. When you've got no colour, I think you need to go to contrast and we've got a bit of contrast going on, but mainly mainly all the all the drama is in that sky which is helping helping the shot. If we didn't have a if we didn't have a sky, then um this shot wouldn't work. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I reckon that could be it folks. It's gone it's just so flat now. Um I think I think there is probably more compositions around here, but I don't think in this light, in this in these uh, specific conditions, I'm going to get anything better than what I've already took. So I've done the long exposure. I've taken a a faster shutter speed to try and capture some drama in the clouds. So I've got two shots, so you can really see. With obviously along with the video you just watched, you can see my thought process from taking that finding composition taking the base shot and then what am I going to do from there and that's pretty much what what I would do every time I go to a location I find a composition um, and if I'm really happy with it like I am here I'll stay there and uh, I'll shoot it as the light changes and that's pretty much what I've done today so for me for a ninja photography at Colliford Lake the famous dead trees uh, I think I'm going to say goodbye and uh, that's a wrap. Don't forget to like, comment down below. Uh, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because it really does help help me improve, uh, improve my self-esteem, 
and it helps grow this channel. If ever, if you like the video, if you watch the video and you like it, please consider subscribing because it uh, it really helps me out. In terms of that other shot round there, um, it's a high contrast, long exposure shot, and there isn't real high contrast now. It's very it's very dull and boring. So if I go around there and, and I like the conditions that I've got, then I probably will shoot a separate video, all of that long exposure photography, and um, try and utilise. The dead, the dead trees down there, but they're slightly different. They're more gnarly and twisted. So uh, look look for a long exposure photography tutorial then, if you want to call it a tutorial. Probably not more. Bloody flies, man. So yeah, look out for that video. I probably will uh, do a video there, all about long exposure photography. Um, it'll probably be out in the next few weeks. If I go around there and the conditions are right, mind. If not, then there will be no video until I'll save it for another day. But anyway, I'm Photo Ninja Photography, Colliford Lake. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe down below. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.